Hello. Uh, last lecture, we finished uh, by talking about uh, the abnormalities that uh, may occur in the sperm. And you can see in order to have a, a normal individual, uh, at least 50% of the sperm must have a normal uh, shape and 40% must uh, show a vigorous uh, motility. For all genesis in mammals, you can see um, uh, the ovary, uh, the ovary, and the, how the stages of the developing ova occur uh, until it is uh, collected by uh, the uh, fallopian tube uh, to undergo fertilization. And normally, fertilization occur in the first uh, third, in the first third of the fallopian tube or the oviduct. So initially, the primary follicles give rise to, uh, which is the germinal cells, gives rise to the primary oocyte. These primary oocyte, which is deployed in number, undergo in meiosis one, uh, meiosis one uh, to, uh, resulting in the first polar body and the secondary oocyte. As you can see that the secondary oocyte uh, got released from the ovary. So the stage of the releasing uh, is a secondary oocyte. And in this case, it is haploid. Uh, the follicle, mainly the uh, uh, over side or the second row side inside the ovary, uh, got the free, uh, nourishment through the follicle cells surround, uh, surrounding the, uh, the second row side. Once it is released, it can undergo a, a second uh, a meiotic division, which is meiosis 2, to give rise to the ovum, which is uh, haploid. Uh, haploid and uh, occasionally the first uh, polar body will divide to give two other uh, secondary polar bodies. You can see once there is a, a pregnancy, a corpus luteum is formed, and we'll talk in, in details uh, about uh, how this uh, uh, regulate the uh, pregnancy. So as a comparison between spermatogenesis and all genesis, of course, the location differs. Testis in the spermatogenesis while ovary. The number of gametes is lifelong production millions in males and fixed amount totally around 400 mature over in females. So it's a fixed number. The gametes uh, per germ cells are four sperms, only one over uh, for the uh, or in all genesis, which is the ovum, as you can see, haploid. The beginning of process begins at the property, while uh, for all genesis, it, it begins early during fetal development, while the fetus is inside the uh, uterus. The gamete formation can, can occur any time, and it is continuous, but for the female, it only occur uh, once a month, which is the menstrual cycle. The end of fertility is the lifelong, but reduces in the quality and the amount of the sperm, while for female, uh, fertility stops at the menopause. Of course, timing of gamete release is any time, while in females, it's monthly cycle. The meiotic division is uninterrupted, so it goes straight from meiosis 1 to meiosis 2, but for all genesis, it is interrupted between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So here in, in males as well, the germ epithelium, which is the lining of the uh, germ cell that's responsible for giving the uh, spermatogonia or orogonia, in males, it is involved in gamete production, but in females, it, it is not involved in gamete uh, production. Here we will see the behavior of the uh, chromosome. Here we will see the behavior of the chromosome during meiosis. As you can see here, it starts at the interface by a process of duplication of the chromosomes. So we are taking here, for example, we are taking here uh, 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 four uh, chromosomes as an example. So you can see at interface, the DNA content uh, per nucleus is two, it is duplicated due to homologous uh, chromosomes. So you have uh, uh, duplicated chromosomes. Soon at prophase one, start the recombination process in which the uh, starts to homo uh, uh, the homologous chromosome starts to align to each other 
and following by recombination. And by the end of meiosis one, there is a reduction division. You can, there is a reduction division and you can see each daughter nuclei will receive the half the complement of the chromosomes. And you can notice this, how recombination occurs. Recombination is exchange of parts of the chromosome. After that, you can see that uh, by meiosis two, you can see that each gamete will have a, a, a haploid number of chromosomes. And of course, in males will have, uh, these will be four sperm, and in, in females, it will be one uh, ovum and the three polar bodies. Here we can see how the uh, behavior of the chromosomes occur during meiosis. As you can see, the centriole, during meiosis, the centriole migrate uh, to the uh, poles and the nuclear envelope uh, disintegrate and the spindle, uh, uh, spindle fibers uh, formed of a microtubules uh, is formed uh, from uh, the centrioles. Soon after that, the spindle fiber attach the chromosomes and each spindle and this spindle fiber pull each chromosome uh, to the pole, followed by all these process is a, a, a karyokinesis or the division of the nucleus, uh, which is followed by cytokinesis uh, to form at the end of four uh, gametes. So you can see this is a simple animation of how homologous chromosome, as you can see after recombination, got attracted by the spindle fiber and then the nuclear envelope is reconstructed again, and the process is repeated again, disappearance of nuclear envelope. Now the chromatids are pulled away to the poles in the, uh, and the new, new nuclear envelope is formed, and now we have four gametes. Initially, in meiosis one, as you can see, the aligned, uh, the aligned material was homologous uh, chromosomes. The aligned material is homologous chromosomes. While in the case of meiosis two, the aligned uh, chromosomes are, uh, the aligned chromosomes are uh, only single chromosomes after recombination. So continuing gametogenesis in uh, mammals, in female, meiosis begins in the embryonic gonads, while in male, meiosis is not initiated until Authority. The critical difference in timing is due to a, a, a molecule that is very important, which is called the retinoic acid, which is produced by the kidney. So why is, we will discuss now why there is a critical, there is a difference in timing. Why in females, meiosis begins at the embryonic gonad, while, while in males, meiosis is not initiated until reaching uh, puberty. So retinoic acid, Actually, what's the function of retinoic acid? Retinoic acid stimulates germ cells to undergo a new round of DNA replication and initiate meiosis. In males, however, the embryonic testes secrete the retinoic acid degrading enzyme, C26B1. So during the embryonic stages of males, since there is, since uh, due to the presence of retinoic acid degrading enzyme, it will degrade the retinoic acid so no meiosis occur. Okay. Here we can see that the number of germ cells in the human ovary changes over lifespan. So you can see here, this is a, a line chart showing the progress through months before a conception. And you can, on the y axis, the number of germ cells times a million. So you can see the baby during the first six months during the first six months in the uterus, the number of germ cells are increasing dramatically, are increasing dramatically. Just before birth, there is a sharp decrease in the number of germ cells just before birth. After birth, it starts decreasing as well, and over years after birth, until reaching 50, age 50, the number of uh, uh, the, no the number of ova actually uh, or germ cells are uh, totally reduced. That's why uh, females uh, cannot give uh, germ cells uh, after uh, at the menopause uh, at the menopause after the menopause. 
So now we have a sperm and ova uh, fully functional uh, and ready for the second process, which is uh, fertilization. So now the stage is set for fertilization to take place. The egg and the sperm will both die if they don't meet. So um, if uh, there is no fusion of egg and sperm, the sperm, the sperm uh, will die. So the coda here that these elements, which are the sperm and the ova, that unite our single cells actually each on the point of death. Yes, because if there is no fertilization, they will die. But their union will lead to a rejuvenated individual because their union will result to a zygote that will be, that will be developed to form an embryo. is forming, which constitute a link in the process, in the eternal process of life. So in other words, we have an eternal process for the human species due to the uh, fertilization of the uh, sperm and ova. So we'll talk now on the next topic, which is the fertilization and how the new organism begins. So fertilization as a definition is the process where two sex cells, gametes, male and female gametes, fuse together to create a new individual with genetic potentials derived from both parents. So fertilization need to accomplish two separate events to transmit genes from parents to offsprings and also to initiate the actions in the excytoplasm that permit development to proceed. So generally fertilization consists of four major events. The first event is sperm and egg contact and the recognition. The sperm had to recognize the egg and hence will make contact so that each sper sperm and egg is a species specific to make sure there is no cross species fertilization. So uh, uh, nature provide mechanism to have only the sperm uh, recognize and the contact with the, uh, uh, the, the egg of the same species. The second event is the regulation of the sperm into, into the egg. egg. Uh, the egg needs to make sure that only one sperm can fertilize the egg. The third event is after uh, internalization of the uh, uh, sperm genetic material, there is fusion of genetic material of the sperm and the egg inside the egg. The last event is, is the activation of the egg metabolism to start development. So once uh, the egg receives the sperm and there is fusion of the genetic material, uh, a zygote is formed and, and it needs to undergo a, 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 a uh, development to form the embryo. So let's talk first about the recognition of egg and sperm in the process of the fertilization. The intersection, the inter, sorry, the interaction of sperm and egg generally proceed according to five basic steps. Chemoattraction of sperm to egg by soluble factors secreted by the egg. So the eggs secrete some soluble factor that the sperm will sense this uh, soluble factor and be directed toward the egg. That means that every egg for every species has a specific soluble factor to make sure that its own sperm of the same species will uh, uh, come in contact with the egg. The second step is the exocytosis of the sperm acrosomal disc to release its enzyme. Of course, as we, as we said in the last lecture, that sperms have acrosomal granules at the head cap. So once there is a contact, the sperm needs to release the content, uh, the enzymes stored in the acrosomal uh, granule, granules to, re, to digest the ovum, the egg's wall. That the third step is the binding of the sperm to the extracellular matrix which is called the vital line envelope in our case in humans or zona biliosida in other elements of the egg. So it needs to bind, to stick to the extracellular matrix of the egg. The fourth, uh, uh, the fourth step is the passage of the sperm through this extracellular matrix. Finally, there is a fusion of egg and sperm uh, cell membrane. 
So let's see how these occur in, uh, in this uh, diagram. So here we will discuss how an external fertilization, uh, how an, uh, it's an example of an external fertilization. That means uh, uh, the egg will meet the sperm outside the body of the organism. So this example is very obvious in the, in, in the, in the animal, which is called the sea urchin. Um, so actually the female individual lays egg outside its body and then the male individual will come and just uh, spray the sperms over the egg. So the egg will fuse with, uh, so the sperm will fuse with the egg externally. So let's start with the first step. So you can see here that the egg, the egg here, that the egg cytoplasm is bounded by egg cell membrane, then extra matrix. In this case, it's called the vital line envelope. Then you have a huge, huge jelly coat, which is called the extracellular coat. Now the sperm, which with its definitive regions, are approaching the uh, very first contact layer, which is the jelly layer. It is equipped with the acrosome, which have the digestive enzymes. Once reaching the jelly uh, layer, the, it starts acrosome reaction in which the acrosome starts to have a process, um, elongated process, uh, which enables this sperm to penetrate deeply inside the uh, jelly layer. While moving in the jelly layer, the sperm head is digesting this jelly layer. Soon after that, uh, the sperm, uh, the sperm head tip head will will contact to the vital line envelope. At this point, this uh, uh, there is a fusion between the acrosomal process and the vital line, um, uh, uh, vital line envelope, enables to open a, a window to the interior of the uh, cell, uh, uh, to the interior of the egg. So again, this is the steps that is occurring for sperm to, uh, to uh, contact, recognize and uh, to contact the egg in case of external fertilization. In this example, we will we, we see the same mechanism which differs slightly than the mechanism which is happening in the external fertilization. And in this example, we take internal fertilization as it happens in uh, the mass. So initially, here is the egg bounded by the egg membrane, it's a membrane. Soon after that, the same layer, which is the zona bellicida or the extracellular matrix to the outside, then more to the outside, there is the extracellular coat called cumulus layers. So the sperm starts approaching and is activated by the, reproductive, re, re, the female reproductive tract. So here, a new information uh, says that, that uh, which differs than the, uh, which happens only in internal fertilization, not in external fertilization, because the OV duct, as I said earlier in this lecture, the OV duct, the fertilization occurs at the first uh, third of the fallopian tube or the OV duct or the reproductive tract. So once the ovum is in the fallopian tube, it secretes some compounds that will activate uh, the sperm to uh, migrate toward the egg. So the sperm, the sperm is oriented to migrate toward the egg. Soon after that, the sperm binds to zona bellicida. There is no jelly coat here. It's only a, a, a loose uh, extracellular coat. Soon after that, there is acrosomal reaction trying to penetrate the zona bellicida. And you can see that the sperm start to lies a hole in the zona bellicida, and once once reaching the exome membrane, fuse and to deliver the nucleus inside the uh, uh, inside the interior of the egg. Okay. So let's take let's let's continue the example of the. As we have seen in the previous two slides, the difference between the external and the uh, internal fertilization in the, with respect to the mode of contact between the sperm and the ova. Let's talk about 
for the external fertilization, the sea ocean uh, sperm uh, need to recognize because it's external, it's in the sea. So the sperm need to uh, got chemo attracted to the ova, otherwise we no, there will be no fertilization. So sperms normally in uh, sea oceans are attracted towards eggs by chemotaxis or chemo attraction. But uh, so how does that occur? Because the eggs secrete a chemical compound very specific and the species specific is called resac. Resact. So let's see an experiment how resact is imported in the process of fertilization. You can see here uh, in, in a petri dish in the lab, the, the collected uh, uh, sperm suspension, about 20 micro, micro, microliter of, of sperm suspensions, and they added just 10 nanomolar, very few uh, concentration, very uh, low concentration of of resect in the media. So you can see here, they included here, injected here at that region, 10 millimolar solution of resect inside the uh, Petri dish. All these round structure actually are sperms and usually sperms, if in solution, it will start vigorously, uh, vigorously uh, rotate around itself, making uh, shapes like circles. So you can see after one second of injecting this 10 nanomolar resect, the sperm is still wriggling and do not sense the uh, resect. Soon after 20 and 40 seconds, the wriggling is more vigorous, more vigorous, and the, start, the sperm start to migrate toward the, towards the region that the resect has been introduced. You can see here it starts these all these white circles is a sperm try to move to the region of the reset. Soon after 90 seconds, most of the sperm are concentrated around the region that was initially in, 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 in reset have been introduced. So this experiment illustrates the importance of the reset in the process of chemotaxing and taxes and in the process of recognizing of over by the sperm. So what is RESAC? RESAC is a 14 amino acid chemotactic peptide. The, the scientists managed to isolate it from the egg jelly of the sea urchin, uh, and this is the Latin name of it. Specific, it is all, it, this RESAC is specific and doesn't attract the sperms of other species. As, as RESAC diffuse from the egg, once it is diffused from the egg, this resac, more sperm are recruited. So resac also act as a sperm activating peptide. So that means it's not only help the sperm to recognize the uh, egg, but it also activates the sperm. And it, it will cause a dramatic and immediate increase in the mitochondrial respiration and, and the sperm motility. Of course, when the mitochondria is activated, the sperm motility will be increased because it has the more energy to swim towards the egg. So now we'll see from this figure, you can see the egg is an center, especially in, in we are talking now about sea ocean, which is uh, uh, the uh, external fertilization example. So you can see that the egg in, is inside and is covered by a huge layer of uh, jelly layer. And the egg is start to secrete resect, which is a chemotactic compound. And you can see the concentration of this insect, uh, the resect varies as you go uh, further uh, from the uh, egg, it changes concentration. The egg is, the sperm is uh, roaming around the jelly coat and once it sense the resect, it starts to migrate through the jelly coat. You can see it starts migrating through the jelly coat. So once it come in contact with the cell membrane, you can see here the sperm. Once it come in contact, it the, 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 the membrane of the sperm. So this is a kind like, a, a, this is a kind 
So this is the cell membrane of the sperm head. And you can see that three sac binds, the molecule that is secreted by the egg, binds to important receptor on the uh, membrane of the uh, sperm, which is called the RGC receptor, which is the resect receptor. Once the binding occur on the membrane of the uh, sperm, a chemical reaction, a cascade of reaction occur inside of the uh, inside the sperm, the head of sperm, in which lead to the activation of sperm. These chemical reaction, the binding activate the uh, 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 the formation of cyclic AMP, which potentiate or increase the influx, the influx of calcium from outside the sperm to inside the sperm. This increase in the uh, concentration of the calcium inside the sperm will activate the sperm and will, will be translated as vigorous swimming uh, towards the egg. So resect receptor, R R R RGC, as, as I said, this RGC, as I said, is uh, only found in the membrane of a species a specific sperm. So that means each receptor is different across the species and uh, it, it's, it, um, it, it binds to specific reset. So binding of reset, as we said, to RGC receptor initiates a cascade of reaction in the cytoplasm of a sperm, leading to the influx, as you can see, the influx of calcium that this calcium, the increase of level in calcium inside the cytoplasm of the sperm will regulate flagellar beads and the swimming by the activating mitochondrial ATP synthase and ATP ases. So here you can see a very good example about the, uh, uh, let's uh, delete the annotation first. Okay, so this is a very good example how the sperm is affected by the level of calcium inside its um, head. So you can see here, this is like a one second interval and how the fast the sperm is activated. The darker to the color, you can see here the red, this means it's more activated. So calcium, uh, that's mean it's more calcium concentration inside the cytoplasm. So you can see that the calcium level in this uh, sea or shin sperm after exposure to resac, after the binding between the resac and the RG receptor, uh, um, the, the red, as you can see the red here, here, indicates the highest level of calcium. Blue is the lowest level of calcium. So you can see du during time, up till one second, there is a fast increase in the calcium levels in the cytoplasm of the sperm. So thus, upon meeting resect, the sperm, upon meeting resect, you can see that Arabacea sperm, which is species of sea urchin, another species of sea urchin, are instructed where to go and are giving the motive force to get there. So um, uh, the binding of resect to RGC uh, will result actually to two major events. It will direct the sperm and it will uh, generate the enough energy for the sperm to swim towards the egg. Okay, and, uh, and this uh, concludes our uh, third lecture and uh, uh, I'm ready for any uh, questions. Uh, okay, thank you.